Hello, my friends. This is The Art of Prepping. Let's talk about the Green New Deal. Uh, you know, there's a lot of nonsense out there. And I mean, I just recently kind of started to think about this proposal of the, the Green New Deal. And this has been a proposed for a while now. This is nothing new. It's been out for a number of years. Uh, but I just wanted to revisit this because it's such nonsense. It's based on really no science. It's it's like every layer of this concept of the Green New Deal is just socialism repackaged. And so I'm going to do the best I can in a condensed format here to kind of expose some of this uh, the best that I can. So the Green New Deal. So what really is all this? So there's these people, uh, typically uh, the radical left that believe that climate change is going on and that we need to reduce and or eliminate fossil fuel usage. And let, let's just stop right there. Um, does our petroleum really come from fossil fuels? You know, or fossils, I should say. Does it come from fossils? Uh, like dinosaurs and things. Um, so, so right off the bat, they're wrong. It doesn't. This is this has been like a myth for a long time. This is something that the mainstream media has has pushed for a long time. That oh, fossil fuels. Uh, there's even a lot of scientists that get tripped up on all this. But petroleum is not from fossils, not from dinosaurs. Um, it's been well known. If you really look at the scientists that actually study this, is that petroleum is made from aquatic uh, phytoplankton and zooplankton. So basically biomass, right? And I mean, there's like bacteria and different plants. And these are, um, these decaying, the, the decaying marine organisms with heat and pressure, basically in, in the ocean over time, uh, can create petroleum if it's done in a certain way, right? So that's what really petroleum is. You know, it's not like, oh, there's a bunch of dinosaurs down there that, you know, over millions of years, they break down into this, this material that we can, you know, process and use to run our cars. Um, so there's a lot of bad information out there. And, you know, I was raised to believe, you know, in the schools that I went to that, oh, you know, it's fossil fuels, you know, it's... Everything is run off of dinosaur bones and things that have decayed and, and compressed, you know, through time, um, you know, through heat and pressure. At least they got that part right um, with the heat and pressure, but everything else is wrong. Right. So let's move on if we can. Uh, so they say we need to reduce or eliminate the fossil fuel usage, which right there is wrong, to curb planet warming greenhouse gas emissions. What are they talking about there? CO2, the stuff that we exhale. So that's supposed to be the really big boogeyman in the room, this global warming greenhouse gas, this, this, this trace gas. I mean, it's such a small amount. It's so ridiculous. It, it's just, it's a fraction of a percent that's out there. It's just, it's trace gas. But this is the boogeyman in the room. And this, this has to be dealt with. We have to capture it or we have to reduce everything. And uh, what? I mean, we have all kinds of geological records and uh, in ice and, and trees that show very clearly that CO2 levels in the past have been a lot higher and the world survived. And if anything, there's probably a lot more life because plants breathe better when they have more CO2. And so that just provides us more food for us humans and other, other animals. So it's like they don't want the world to get greener. They just want to choke the world and kill it because these globalists, these left-wing hacks are literally just death cults, you know, in my opinion. And they don't like life. They don't like God's creation. And so they, they just do whatever they can to kill and to maintain um, lies about these things. So they said they want to curb planet warming greenhouse gas emissions and they want to get rid of CO2. And of course, there's not even real, any real information. There's just theories or hypotheses that, oh, CO2 actually increases the temperature 
and and there, and I don't believe that to be at all. There's actually a lot of information that says CO2 is a byproduct of warming. It's not the warming. You know, it's not the tool that causes, it's not the instrument of warming. Because the CO2 is typically trapped, most of it's trapped and stored in the oceans, right? And so it has to be released. Well, why would it be, why would it be released? Well, the ocean's warm, but it's not the CO2 that's causing its, its own self to be released from the ocean. Uh, there's this thing called the sun and there are solar cycles, Okay. And the scientists never want to talk about solar cycles, solar activity, any of that. I mean, at the time of making this video, it is freezing cold, okay? And there's all kinds of code records this year for 2021. And, you know, there's a solar minimus going on right now. The sun is very dormant. There's like pretty much no sun activity, no sunspots at all. And so people just don't typically look at all this. But the sun has a lot to do with how warm or how cold the planet is. Okay, so let's continue on with all this rhetoric from the Green New Deal. And so they say to curb planet warming greenhouse gas emissions and to fix societal problems. Now, here we go. Here's the real agenda, right? It's not that we really have a problem with global warming because there really isn't any it's not because that you know the gas that the trace gas that we exhale co2 is a problem but now they're telling us what they really want so they they give us a lot of bullshit up front and then they say to fix societal problems like economic inequality which they're now trying to substitute for the word inequity you know um, because they're saying well not everyone should be treat it equally. Some people should just have a lot more, be given a lot more. You see, it just never ends, right? Uh, but they're saying, you know, at least at the time of this article that, that was written, which was somewhere in 2019, um, is that it says that to fix societal problems like economic inequality and racial injustice. Really? I mean, how does that have anything to do with the green new deal they, they just like to slip in all those social social warrior type themes right and of course it always has to come back to race and inequality they hype all that and of course it's the radical left and it's the socialist ideology that causes all these things to begin with it, it's really shocking how they cause the problem and then they turn around a moment later and say, well, we have the solution, but we have to limit the way you live and change everything because of things that we proposed. Now, they don't say that directly, of course, but this is what's really going on. They cause the problems or they just make up problems and then they just make up solutions. Right. And then they try to force it on us because it's a planetary emergency. Right. All that crap. Um, and so before I go on, though, I'm not some kind of denialist that says, oh, there's no pollution in the world. Yes, there's pollution and that should be dealt with. But this whole idea based on the principles well, the lack of science from their viewpoint has no bearing in my life because it's not real. You know, if they, they presented real science. And, and, and like logical, you know, train of thought. And they didn't jump from, well, we got a planetary emergency because everything's getting so hot, which it's not. But they and then they switch in mid sentence to, well, we got to fix this societal problems, right? Economic inequality and racial injustice. It's so bad everywhere, right? It's so bad. You know, what's so bad is the mainstream media causing all this division and putting out all these lies. People normally are pretty decent people. People typically get along if you don't just stir the, the race pot and make up a lot of crap. And show videos of police officers, like white officers, doing things to black people. And a lot of times it's taken way out of context. And I'm not here to say that, oh, every police officer, especially every white officer is, is innocent and, and no one's done anything wrong ever in the history of, of, of the world. Of course not. There's all kinds of bad people everywhere, even in law enforcement. But I would say the vast majority of police officers, in particular white officers, are not out to be some kind of racist person. Yes, there are places in the U.S. that probably are a bit more outwardly racial, racist, racist, if I can say it right, racist than others. I mean, this is what's been reported in a lot of places from people that I actually know. But generally speaking, though, people tend to get along or they're, they're at least somewhat functional and they don't need, though, all this race baiting and all this tension 
from the media. And a lot of times it's, it's out of context and it's just plain lies just to stir the pot. So these are the same people, right? Okay, so what else do they say? Well, the threat is that we have glo- increasing gr- global temperatures, and this is supposed to be um, a global emergency, and that this can lead to heat waves that can be deadly. Hey, we already have a history of hundreds of years of history that's on record of heat waves, way before we had any kind of major elevated uh, CO2 levels. So you know, this is ridiculous. They don't want to talk about any of that, though. And the heat waves typically go in cycles depending on the solar cycles. So they say, well, we got all these increase in global temperatures, heat waves, and wildfires. You know, they're getting so bad and droughts. Well, let me let's stop here. I mean, you can go back and even congressional uh, reports, the, the most recent congressional reports that were asked and that were told to study this and report back. Is there an increase in uh, weather phenomenon, you know, dangerous weather? And they said, clearly, absolutely not. And then there's a ton of independent researchers that say not only is there not any kind of increase, there's not any kind of increase in, uh, in weather systems, dangerous weather systems like hurricanes and tornadoes and things, but it's actually lower than it used to be. Historically, it's lower. So they don't want to talk about that, but they're, they're just pulling things out of the air here. Yeah, it's big global temperature increases, all these heat waves that we've never seen before. Yeah, right. Wildfire increases. You know, the wildfire that we've had recently in most areas has been set by humans or it's been because of technology. I mean, how many uh, power lines have caused brush fires or forest fires? And this is something you've been seeing the last few years in, in California. And, and the droughts, well, you might want to talk to those globalists that like to do weather, you know, engineering modifications and so forth. So, um, and, and there are some areas that just naturally have droughts for a few years or a decade or so, and then that gets changed out. So, you know, to say that, oh, it's just because there's too much of this trace gas, that it's such a, such a small amount of trace gas. And, and then you look at the science about how you would even measure CO2 especially in the upper atmosphere. And it's so difficult that it's not ever really considered an exact science. It's just, we don't have the technology to very specifically measure it the way that we would want. We don't even really know what the number percent it is, but we do have a, you know, a very good idea that it's extremely low. It's not like, you know, uh, (laughs) mammals on earth are having a hard time breathing because man, there's just so much CO2. No, we're nowhere near any dangerous levels. So let's just be clear. Let's move on. So they say that we need to fix a bunch of stuff and that technology alone is not enough. Of course, Bill Gates thinks that technology is the main way to go. Uh, He's another piece of work, you know, another globalist. Uh, But basically they're saying, you know what? Technology is not enough. We have to take some of your freedoms and we have to fix poverty. That's the, that's the whole uh, backbone of the problem, apparently. It's poverty, income inequality. And uh, once again, they have to throw this in there because they're the radical left. Everything goes back to racial discrimination. You know, so I guess that the CO2, uh, is, it, they're racist. You know, the CO2, the, the trace gas is racist. And um, yeah, anyone who actually uses any kind of modern technology that puts out CO2, they're, they're racist. And, and so we got we to gotta stop that racial discrimination, right? So let's just, let's just go through this one more time. Because, I mean, this is something that we need to look at. Because we go from what the title is, Green New Deal. And now we're talking about poverty, income inequality, and racial discrimination. So let's just pick those apart. Poverty. Well, why do you think there's poverty? Why do you think there's poverty? Is it a lack of education? Eh, Possibly. Is it because of broken homes? Possibly. What could be some causes of that? Maybe because there's so much dependency on government. Maybe there's just a lot of government programs that really have never worked and maybe have done more harm than good. Uh, Maybe it's just because the system is rigged, right? To a large degree, to a lot of people. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people in poverty and they have income inequality, because they're given basically a check ongoing, you know, through a welfare program not to work. So, I mean, you know, you're telling me that 
government is supposed to come around and fix this when they're typically the ones that caused a lot of this problem. Income inequality. You know, you have the Federal Reserve and the U.S. Treasury and, and, and currently the House and the Senate doing things, you know, well, let's just go and, and say that the Congress and the executive branch, that the one we have now with Biden, you know, his administration, what a, what a clown show. They're wanting to pump all this money, right? And if you see where all of this is going, it's going to special interest groups, it's going to corporations, I mean, big corporations, and it's going to a lot of people who don't even need any help. And they're just throwing it into the stock market. And so if you want to talk about inequality, you know, the Treasury and Congress colluding together and working closely with the Fed to manipulate who wins and who loses in this whole rat race is just, I mean, it's just about as un-American as you can think. And so if, if, if so this Green New Deal is calling for the government to to fix poverty and income inequality and racial discrimination when they're the ones that caused it to the to a large degree. Now, this racial discrimination, though, a lot of this is just pie in the sky stuff. A lot of this is made up. Yes, there are a lot of people who say, hey, I really do have a real experience of being, you know, uh, discriminated. Uh, but this comes from all all walks of life. And this whole idea of white privilege, is it's all made up. This whole, I mean, you can go to college. I mean, hey, I, I've been to college and I know what the applications were even years ago, okay, uh, to get grants or scholarships and or uh, just to get a student loan, okay? And I, as a white person, had a lot more of a limited, this is back in the day, I can only imagine how much more now it's out of whack, that white people had a lot lot less options, uh, a lot, lot less grants and, and things to apply to. Because guess what? I'm white and I'm supposed to have all this privilege. And this is all bunk. This is, that's discrimination right there. They talk about uh, equality, but then they, they, all they do is divide people. This is the radical left and this is socialism. It's always about, oh, you know, whoever the majority is, they're the evil ones. Well, I'm telling you what, if it wasn't for, you know, uh, you know, business owners, right? And if it wasn't for white business owners, which is makes up the majority of owners in America, then we wouldn't have much of the economy that we would have, right? And I'm not promoting white people over anyone else. I'm just telling you the facts, that most people in America are white. Therefore, you would, you would see that, okay, we have more white businesses. This is not discrimination or inequality. This is just population ratios. And so it's just bizarre that people are like, oh, you know, if you're white, you have all these privileges. I mean, I even know someone personally, which I can't hardly even talk to her anymore because she's so ignorant about this. But she just goes along with the groupthink. You know, this twisted mentality that, oh, you know, a white person inherently just has all these privileges. She can't even tell me anything that I I can do that other people can't, though. She can't give me a concrete answer. She's tried to, like, say, well, if I got pulled over by the police, I wouldn't be as suspicious to them as other people. I mean, that's bullshit, you know. Yes, there are some areas that uh, people are profiled because they typically are the ones that create the most crime. But that's pretty obvious as a tool for policing. Uh, but that's not discrimination to have a legitimate profile. Just like if white people in a certain area were committing most crimes, then you would expect that the police would profile white people more because they're the ones causing the most problems, right? And so, I mean, and I mean, when I'm talking about profiling within within the, the limit of the law, too, I'm not talking about, oh, they're they're just accusing people randomly, but, you know, if, if the problem typically comes from a certain group, then you would uh, want to investigate that group. And so, you know, this so-called friend that I have that likes to kind of talk about all my white privilege, and she's white herself, which is just hilarious, that she thinks that she has all this privilege too, which she doesn't. Um, it's just, she just goes and buys into all this. So just be so careful and question all this. And if you could think for the moment that, oh, you're a white person, you have all this privilege, you tell me what the privilege is. Because if anything, I've noticed that I haven't had the same opportunities as a white male, okay, over my lifetime than a lot of other people uh, uh, that are minorities just because they're just not presented. They're just not available. And I'm talking about specific things like 
college applications, grants, scholarships, and all this. Um, it's pretty amazing how, if anything, white people are discriminated, you know, more so than most of the other groups. And of course, that's not uh, something that the left would admit to um, because they don't live in the real world. So let's get back to the topic here of that these people that are pushing the Green New Deal, they not only think that the government can fix poverty, which they help contribute to and to help incoming inequality, which once again, <laughs> the Congress and, and laws that have been passed uh, mixed in with the U.S. Treasury, uh, mixed in especially with the Federal Reserve, has caused massive income inequality and wealth inequality. And, and then you, you mix in this whole racial discrimination that the, the radical left pushes and the mainstream media pushes and this whole messed up, this whole messed up view that certain people inherently just have more privilege than others. And uh, that especially nowadays that they're moving from uh, inequality that, OK, we shouldn't just treat everyone equal. But now certain people should just get a lot more than others. And that's what they're talking about in terms of of equity, you know, that there's all this equity issue, you know, inequity, if you will. And so they're saying, OK, we need to give certain groups of people a lot more. So for example, if you're a white person and you need help, you need welfare because something happened to you, you, you came across a, a, a patch of, of rough times, um, maybe they're going to give you $200 a month uh, or whatever for assistance for food versus if you are someone of a different background and you're not white, they're saying maybe you should, you should deserve 250 or $300. You see, and just because they're different than you. And I mean, you know, you talk about uh, causing division among people. I mean, that'll do it right there when people are not treated equal. So I'm all about equal treatment. But the radical left is really moving away from that whole concept and getting to the idea that, oh, no, just certain people should be given more. And of course, they think that minorities are just should be the ones that should benefit the most. And it's just so crazy because... If the majority of the population is white, then that's the reason why there's more white people and there's more white people doing things. You know, it's just like if you go to Africa, I mean, it's just so ridiculous. You know, the African people, to my knowledge, they don't look at themselves and say, oh, we're the majority. So we must have all this black privilege. You see what I'm saying? And then there's so much evidence that shows that white people in general are not the highest performers in America, for example. I mean, if you look at the higher the highest earners is typically Asians. Asians outperform any other group, to my knowledge. So we're, we're, no one's talking about the Asian privilege, you know? And so that's why all this is just made up. The more you dig, and I can talk about this for hours, but it's just so ridiculous. The more you dig, the more you find that it's all contrived and that you have to have a low IQ to even, you know, fall for any of this, right? So if some people that are around you telling you that you have all this white privilege or any privilege, regardless of what your skin color is, you want to just tell them to shut the hell up, right? And you probably don't want to be friends with them anymore. That's a level of ignorance that can really get a society into trouble. And so anyways, this video, I don't mean to be vulgar or nothing like that. I, I just feel passionate about the, that this is a ridiculous thing going on. And I've been holding this in for quite a while. And so I just feel like I really need to talk about it. And so I hope you understand where I'm coming from and um, take me the right way. And I do appreciate, you know, everyone that watches my videos. So let's, be, let's you know, continue here, the conversation. So they not only say that, oh, the government should fix all this. And of course, we can't do it through just technology, but they should re-engineer, you know, social engineer how society is to eliminate poverty, income and inequality and racial discrimination. But it calls on the federal government to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and create high paying jobs. I mean, they're just piling it on now, right? So we're supposed to just pretty much uh, reduce and eliminate most greenhouse gases. And then, of course, they put a date like a 2050. Of course, they're always changing the date, but that's what they have now. So roughly speaking, in 30 years, we're supposed to have almost zero or at least net zero um, neutral emissions or whatever they call it. Uh, so they're saying to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, which once again, let's just call it for what it is, CO2. It's the air we're breathing out, right? 
I mean, it's unbelievable that that's some kind of major threat, which it's not. It's a trace gas and it's not dangerous, but they, they're saying that it is because they don't believe in science and they just make things up. And they said also here that they, we should have uh, the, the, the federal government in particular create, the federal government should create high paying jobs. The federal government can't even balance their own budget. They can't even keep themselves organized. They're a freaking mess. And they're supposed to be like the leader in job creation. I mean, who do you think pays for all those jobs? Taxpayers, you know? And I think even more so now than ever is that it's not even really the taxpayers for the most part. It's just borrowed debt to pay for all this labor because I don't think the tax is enough anymore to pay for all this. And so, so we're supposed to have the federal government take, I mean, what does this sound like to you? This doesn't sound like a, a free country, a capitalistic country. This sounds like some kind of a gulag situation coming up. This sounds like, you know, communism, you know, some type of totalitarianism. It's a, a, a state, you know, that is a socialist state, you know, that everything is owned and controlled by the, the government, that they tell you, you know, what you should do and what you can't do. And, but they're supposed to just create these high paying jobs, right? And they're supposed to ensure clean air, clean water, and healthy food. Oh, they do such a great job with that, though. I mean, they, they don't have any problems with GMOs, you know? They don't have any problems with all the pesticide and Monsanto that's been able to thrive for all these years. Of course, it's it's been changed up now. You know, they, they call it something different. But it's unbelievable that we're supposed to just trust the, the FDA now because, yeah, they're, they're, they have such a good track record of that, all that clean air and clean water. Oh, yeah, there's so many places that never had any cl- water problems with lead and all kinds of other uh, poisoning elements. Of course, you know, I mean, the fluoride they put in our waters and stuff. Oh, that's really great, you know, and all the chlorine and oh, that's super healthy. And then we're supposed to just trust them with all the food. Yeah. So, I mean, unbelievable. So healthy foods, and of course they say that we should have our basic rights. Our basic rights should have those things. So we should demand and we should be guaranteed to have clean air, clean water, and healthy food. Well, who's going to enforce that? And, and who are they going to have to punish to make that happen? You see, it's like some people that tell me in the past, we have a, we have a right to health care. So you, you can say that you, the government should be able at gunpoint to make doctors do things. You don't have a right to health care. That's such ridiculousness. That's, that's a socialist ideology. Um, I mean, I would hope that you can get health care. But the moment you make it so that it's, it's not optional, that, that you force doctors to see you and you force it, then that's not a free country, you know? Okay, let's continue. Good Lord. So they're saying that the federal government should come in here and reduce greenhouse gas emissions, create high paying jobs, ensure clean air, clean water, healthy food as a basic right and end all forms of oppression. I mean, <laughs> wow. Well, guess what? The federal government is a form of oppression. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's all double speak, you know, double talk. It's all. You know, it's just manipulation of the lexicon of our language. They are oppression and they're trying to call upon the people who create probably the most division and, and oppression to be the the liberators of oppression. It's it's laughable, completely laughable. It's sad, but laughable. Uh, so <laughs> what's the takeaway from all this? Uh, wow. That's well. Electric vehicles that they're calling for and all these power plants like big old wind turbines and stuff. In case you haven't noticed, especially like uh, solar panels, uh, they create a very large load on the system. It's very labor intensive. And they create it creates a lot of carbon emissions. The same thing that they're talking about reducing. And so. Um, it's been known for a while though, and this is just a part of the, the ridiculousness of all this, that just, let's, let's just take electric vehicles, for example, uh, that electric vehicles, um, have a larger carbon footprint, uh, than, than non electric vehicles. And where do you think all the power is coming from to power these electric vehicles? It mostly it's coming from coal plants or power plants that are, uh, you know, nuclear power plants. And you, you, you think that the coal 
uh, is like, you know, uh, some kind of super clean source. I mean, they, they're doing a lot better with it. It's a lot cleaner than it used to be. So I'll give them that. Uh, but do you think that nuclear fusion and well, the nuclear rods, I should say not fusion, but the nuclear rods that are used uh, in nuclear power plants, you, you know, they have to store them after a while, you know, and there's all kind of nuclear waste that's produced from nuclear power plants. You think that's all real green? Um, so, I mean, it's 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 laughable. We don't have the infrastructure uh, just to just get rid of uh so-called fossil fuels, once again, you know, fossil fuels, uh, it's such a lie. Um, so, you know, we, we have this, this unbelievable setup here uh, to destroy our economy, our way of life in the name of, of basically, you know, clean, clean energy, you know, uh, uh, fighting the, the global climate crisis. Uh, which is made up and, you know, and they put this nice little label, the Green New Deal. What are your thoughts about this? I, I'm not going to be able to speak, you know, speak much more about this without going crazy. Um, I have some other, you know, thoughts on this topic, but it's so backwards, the approach, because these people, once again, they create the problem. They come up with a solution that benefits them. It's it's just a social engineering you know, type of, uh, uh, I guess, program that they have in place here. And they're trying to convince people, it's not going very well, right? Because it's not based on science. But uh, they're trying to convince people that all this is true. You know, that we, we, we really definitely need to stop using all these things and, and we need to transition over to this and that. The problem is that there's the technology hasn't caught up. And um, a lot of these technologies actually produce more of a carbon footprint than the previous <laughs> technologies. And it's just all very laughable, you know? And so I don't buy into any of this. Uh, you believe what you want, I guess, but don't lie to yourself. You know, I get some people every once in a while that just can't handle what would I say about this kind of topic. That's why I don't talk about it very much because people first off don't watch this kind of video uh, for some reason. And then secondly, people get their, they get butt hurt about the things that I say. And you know what? I'm at the point now that um, let's just speak the truth and let's move forward and let's go ahead and get rid of this nonsense and, peop and call people out for what it is. The Green New Deal is a sham. It's just one more step closer to a socialist, you know, economy. And this is going to lead into carbon credits, you know, and taxes and all kind of mandates and limitations. I mean, everybody's going to be like looked at in terms of what's their carbon footprint. And if you just use too much of something, then you'll be taxed extra and penalized. And I mean, it's unbelievable. And it may get to the point, though, that if you're a white person and you use too much, you know, petroleum, uh, then you get extra tax than if you're a minority, you know, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. They're going to just do whatever they can to divide the people. And what I would say is this, don't, let's not fight among ourselves and get mad with each other. Let's look at the, the policymakers and let's get rid of them. These people are scum. These people are globalists. These are not Americans. These, these people typically don't represent a lot of times their own nations because the green new deal is found in different other countries as well. Sometimes packaged in a different way or call it something different, but let's get rid of these people. Uh, it's a small group of people really that these people um, represent. And so uh, these ideologies are not conducive to a free society. So thanks for checking this video out. Catch you later.